quizzes, pop tests, pop homework checks. I always tell you, um, we have a quiz coming up this Friday on 2.3, which we just finished up, which was graphing systems, right? We had to put them in slope intercept form and graph them. And then 2.4, which we're learning today and tomorrow, systems again, but just different methods of solving a system. And then we'll do a review that will be just like the quiz, okay? So you'll do a worksheet on Thursday and a quiz on Friday that's gonna look exactly the same. It's pretty short, okay? So between now and Friday, make sure if you're absent, you watch any of the videos. If you completely didn't understand something, maybe you need to go back and watch a video. Um, also, checking homework, finishing homework, because we will have a homework check at the end of class on Thursday, okay? So the, the quiz review is four questions. It's two graphs, a substitution problem, and then the elimination problem, which we learn tomorrow. It won't take the whole period. You will have lots and lots of time to ask me for help. I don't understand how you put this in slope intercept form. Where did you get this number? How did you do this? That's the day to ask me, okay? And get any of your homeworks that you didn't finish, finished, okay? So what we're doing today is solving system again, and it's just using a new method called substitution. And this is an algebraic method of solving a system versus graphically solving it, okay? So what I want you to remember is what a system is. It's just two or more, right now we're just working with two equations. Two equations, that's a system. The solution is still an ordered pair. So our answer is still gonna be an X and a Y. So on a graph, it's where they cross. Here, we're gonna be working with variables just like we always do. So th think about what the word substitution means. Like in a sports game, a sport, in a sport, like um, basketball, for example, if you have a substitution, you take out somebody and put somebody in that place, right? You take out the point guard, you put a point guard in. That's what substitution means. Have a substitute teacher. Take me out of this chair, put somebody in my place, right? Substitute. So there's really two types of substitution problems, and here are the two types, okay? What I want you guys to think of with substitution is you're replacing something with something else, like I just said. And in this one, I think you guys would agree that y equals y, right? Y equals y. They are the same thing. So if y equals y, then these also equal each other. In other words, I'm basically just taking all of 3x minus 1 and plugging it in for y in the other equation, right? If I said y equals 3, you guys would totally understand that I, if I told you plug 3 in for y. Who cares that it's a whole equation? In this type, you end up just setting them equal to each other. y equals y, so this equals this. And without me even telling you what to do, what do you think you do? What makes sense to do now? Are we gonna graph that? No. What does it look like we would do? What, what'd you say? By doing what? But what, what are, what's my end result gonna be? Okay, you guys are saying it without saying it. Um, you're gonna solve for x, right? You're solving, you're gonna get x equals, which is half of an ordered pair, right? We want x and y. Our final answer will be an ordered pair like this. It just won't be from a graph, okay? So I'm going to get my x's together just, Shane, what do I normally say there? You're the only one that laughed last time. Get my x's together just not in real life. Yeah, thank you. Just not in real life. Get your x's together. <laughs> thank you, Shane. Maybe if I say dumb things like that, it'll help you guys remember. Okay, so could I have subtracted the three X from the other side? Of course, it doesn't matter which X's you get together, okay? So I added two X, um, now I'll add the one. All right, those cancel, four plus one is five. Divide by five, and X equals one. There's half my answer, half the answer. So I have x, what do I need? y. Now look guys, this is really, this is nice and easy. You can plug that one in here or here, either place. It doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer no matter which one you choose. You only need to choose one. I'm gonna plug into both just to prove it to you so I don't get 
because usually people are like, wait, how is it the same? Look, I'm going to pick the first. This is the one I would definitely choose normally because there's fewer negatives and stuff in it, right? I'm just plugging that one in that first equation, and I get two, right? That's my answer. I'm done, okay? But just to show you that it doesn't matter and you don't have to do both, I'm going to plug that one into the other equation and prove to you that no matter which one you plug into, you will get two, okay? So it doesn't matter. Pick one or the other does not matter. And so what this means, guys, is if I had asked you to graph these two, if I asked you to graph them, which you didn't, that's just another method. If I asked you to graph them, they would have crossed at one, two, okay? You would have graphed them, slope intercept form, and wherever to the right one up to is that would have been the solution. So this is just another method. It's not a different solution, just a different way, okay? So that's one type of substitution problem. When the y, y's are both by themselves, you can just set those equal to each other, okay? Look at this next one. Any questions before I go to the, this one? I am looking around and seeing everybody working and and listening and not on their phones, and I'm super proud of you. Thank you. All right. So in this system, we only have one equation where the variable is by itself. It could be x by itself or y by itself. Bottom line is this. If y equals all of this, I can plug it into the other equation for what? Y. Yeah. If y equals this, I can take out this y and plug all of that in right there. Right? Just like if I said y equals 2. Pretend. I'm going to write in pencil, so don't write it. If I said y equals 2, plug it in, you'd be like, oh, where do I put it? Do I put it in for x or do I put it in for y? You would all know that you would put, I guess you can't see it, that says y equals 2. You would plug the 2 in for y. Okay? Same idea. It's just a fancier thing on the other side of the equal sign. It's negative x minus 5. Who cares what's in there? That, whatever y equals, we can plug into the other equation for y. So I'm going to rewrite this first one right here. So I have 3x minus 2, right? 3x minus 2. Take out this y and plug all of that in. And then finish the rest of the equation. Do we, do we understand that? If it had said x equals, I would have plugged it in after the 3. Okay? One or the other letter will be given to you. And now we're going to, what do you think we do? Solve for x. Yeah. This is equation solving. Be careful. There's something tricky in this one. When you distribute, don't forget you're distributing a negative 2. Okay? That's negative 2x plus 10. Gio, are you paying attention? You look like you're on your phone. I haven't uploaded the notes yet. Oh, you have a hard time seeing? How smart that is of you to do. And here I was accusing you, and you were doing something really good. Gosh, I'm mean. Okay, so, um, again, if I have like, what, did he say something rude and inappropriate? You haven't seen me get mad, but I have a mean side. I'm Italian. I can get I can, I can get really mean. All right, all right. Back to this, guys. We have x's on the same side. To, listen, this is a very common mistake, even at this level. Level, we're not crossing the equal sign, so you're not like adding two x to three x or subtracting subtracting three x from negative two x. They're on the same side. You're just combining like terms. Right here? Because it was a negative here. Oh, okay. He caught my mistake. I'm so sorry. I was distracted by the, um, the bad children. The negative x times, the negative 2 times negative x, thank you, should have been positive. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Negative times negative is positive 2x. Negative here times negative here is positive here. I apologize. But same idea, they're on the same side, so we just combine them. That's 3x plus 2x is 5x plus 10 equals 0. Keep on going. I need to get x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 10 
from both sides. 5x equals negative 10. Divide by 5, x equals negative 2. So negative 2 is half of my ordered pair. I just need y. You can plug into either one, guys. You can plug into this equation or this equation. Which one is easier, the first or the second? Which one? The second one, because y is already by itself. But if you like the first one better, go for it. It doesn't matter. I proved it to you on this one. But I'm going to plug it into the second one. Remember, when you plug a negative in where there's already a negative, minus and a negative, those two, they will cancel out and become positive. Okay? So if I had you put these both in slope-intercept form, pull out the M and the, the B and graph them, they would cross at that point. Okay? So same answer, different method of solving. Okay? So I'm going to pass out your worksheet in just a second. But remember, there are two special cases. When you get no solution or infinitely many solutions, here's what they look like. I would write this down. Okay? So we call these special cases. If you're working these out and your variables cancel, like you'll get some where you might have 2x on this side and 2x on this side. So when you subtract 2x from both sides, all the x's go away. When that happens, you know it's a special case. And you'll see it on the worksheet, okay? If you get a number that equals each other, like 7 equals 7, that's true. If it's a true statement, that's going to be infinitely many solutions, okay? If you get 7 equals 3 or anything that doesn't equal each other, you say no solution. Now, I just picked random numbers. It could be 5 equals 5 or 0 equals 0 or 10 equals 10 or any two different numbers. But when you have no variables, you know it's going to be one of these two situations. If it's a good one, it works infinitely many. If they don't equal each other, no solution. Okay? Right, I am going to get you started on this worksheet. Let me pass it out. Homework check Thursday, quiz Start. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna do some with you, guys. Let's do one through six. If you want to do seven and eight, I'll have the key up so you can try it. If you just feel like you need more practice, okay? Shh, 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 shh. So, guys, remember, there's two types of problems. One through four are like the first type. Look at them all. They have y equals y equals. And then the rest of them is where there's already one, there's only one of them by themselves. So those are like the second example. So it's broken up just like that. So remember, if y equals y, then what's on the other side of their equation equal each other as well. And I like to look ahead to see where I'm going to get a positive x, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to add 7x instead of adding 4x, just so I get a positive, but it really doesn't matter.
So we got x equals 4. Now you can plug the 4 back into either equation. You've got to plug in for x, right? Either x doesn't matter. Pick which one you want to plug into and do that. Ask a question if I lost you on any of those steps. You guys are wonderful. You're making me like super happy today. I almost want to cry. Like everyone seems to be paying attention and doing what they're supposed to do. It makes me so happy. What? Extra credit? Okay, I will, in my heart. Hmm. Here's the problem. The people that will do it are the ones that don't need it. Okay, I, let me, because I told you about the special cases. This is one of those. This is one of those that you're going to get no solution or many solutions. So let me just start it with you. We like these. These are super fast. They're easy. So negative 5x minus 18 equals negative 5x minus 12. Okay, so I set them equal to each other, just like I did in number one. And then you want to get your x's together, right? So I can add 5x to both sides. But look what happens when I do that. The x's cancel on both sides. Right when that happens, right, Dylan? Right when this happens, I know it's going to be either no solution or infinitely many solutions. It's got to be one of those two, okay? How do I tell? Well, if they don't equal each other, right, these do not equal each other, this is no solution. That's all you write. There's no ordered pair because there is no place that they would cross on a graph, for example. It's like parallel lines, just like we saw worksheet. Okay? If it was negative 18 equals negative 18, you'd say infinitely many solutions. Okay? If they were the same number on both sides. Good? You get that? Okay. Keep on going. I'll come help you. Yes, Tom. I'm using Mrs. Shackton's keys. It's I'm trying to separate them out for you here. Probably making it worse. Even though I didn't assign 7, just look real quick. Look, 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 look. See how you got 8 equals 8? There's an example of infinitely many solutions. Okay? 8 equals 8. Because it's 